MZ ETZ 250. It may be known as a 251, I can't really remember now. In the paperwork it has its V5 registration document, the four former keepers, it's a UK model. It also has an HPI check printout that just shows that the background on the bike is clear, there's nothing there to be concerned about. There is no other paperwork with the bike. Looking around, a few little things to point out. Um, I, firstly, I think this bike could be a special of some sort. I've never seen another one with a chrome tank and side panels and expansion chamber on that mudguard with that size wheel fitted. So it may have been done by the last or one of the owners the bikes had, or maybe it came out of the factory like that. I don't know. But anyway, looking around the bike, I've noticed that the two instrument lenses are cracked. The way they are cracked makes me think it's not impact damage, but some kind of design flaw in there. Maybe the casing was too tight for the glass or something. Um, but anyway, there's that. The instruments do work, as you'll see in the video where I'm riding the bike anyway. Um, this is a light switch that's been fitted. That turns the lights on, and then the other switch on the left-hand switch there dips them. So I don't know why that's like that. Um, maybe it's to do with the modification that the bike has had with the handlebars or something like that. Um, it's been fitted with this excess accessory speedo, which I haven't tested. It didn't work when I rode the bike, but the speedo on the bike itself does work. I don't know whether one of the owners perhaps thought that the speedo on the bike wasn't accurate enough. Or oh, maybe because it was in kilometres, that's probably why they did it, I expect. Anyway, there's that. Um, the bat This is just reminding me that the battery that's located behind there is flat. I don't think it's worth trying to charge it up. It's been some years since it's uh, not been on the road so you're going to need another battery but it only looks like a cheap little 12 volt sort of thing. There's that. Um, the front mud guard has been mounted in a rather odd way. It, it sort of pivots on this underneath this headlamp bracket there and it can sort of move um, rotationally side to side for some reason. Um, and I also noticed that it just about touches the fins down there on the cylinder head. None of that actually matters. You don't have to do anything with it. It's just it isn't kind of the way I would have done it. But anyway, there's that. The front brake seems to be binding a little bit. Um, the bike, generally speaking, once looking at you might sort of find other things around that I haven't spotted. Maybe like things like forks wheels may have gone a bit hard and want a bit of using or that sort of thing. Um, anyway, that's not binding badly on there, but it's enough to make me think you might have to do something with it. Um, somebody's taped on this indicator lens with some yellow tape. I think they could have used black tape or even change the indicator lens or whatever needs doing there. So there we go. Oh, we have one of the last things there. There's a spoke nipple broken on this rear spoke here. I would think if you were careful, you could even just fix that in situ, just let the tyre down. Um, you might have to take the tyre off, actually, because there's bound to be a little old spoke nipple inside. Anyway, just put another nipple on there, straighten up the spoke, and that's probably going to be okay. Tighten up the rest of them while you're at it. Um... So that I want doing for the MOT. But that's basically it. So you need a battery, you need to do that rear spoke. Um, it seems to work, all the lights and the electrics all seem to be okay. And just want, really wants using and putting back into action. So there we go. Good luck with the bidding.